Uh, I'm happy to be here. It's a, it's a great honor. And also, I, I, we should, I probably use, I don't know what Andras is, but I love the title, Doctor, how is it, Doctor Fear Love? The way I love, I learned to love failure. That's really my story. And it starts with this failure. It was, uh, it was a, a web development company. And um, it, was, it was fast. I was at good, well, right time, uh, right place, and I, I had the talent. So I just I launched into it, and I was pretty successful early on with it. But then it started to press. And that's, it's just, I just would like to give some insights into the, the way failure works, or what my experience is, that it started to press on me. Um, the, the, the project itself, the way I, I felt it was a success, the way I had expectations towards myself to make it an even bigger success because there's always a bigger car or, or a bigger yacht or whatever that you can buy. So it's somehow I, I started to suffer within that thing or project that I felt was, was already dying and I just could not let go. So far, my, my failure Eventually, I sold the company. It was not because that I was so wise that I decided to sell. It was because I had no other options. And it's just very interesting to me how, how failure really has this, well, for me at least, it has this anatomy of difficulty of letting go and actually making myself suffer much, much longer than I could have exited much, much earlier. But I didn't because I just wanted to wanted to make it work. It, I had this expectation uh, towards myself that I I will succeed and I push through. And this is so interesting that I, I see this pattern with many people that sometimes it's letting go, uh, which which is the key to get away from these uh, these situations. That's that's one thing regarding regarding failure. And then an another another after this company, I had I had the time. I had all the time of, you know, of the world to think what I wanted to do. I had like a carte blanche, what do I want to do? And, uh, and I had these big, entertained these big business plans, like I made billions another way. I didn't succeed the first time, so I, I succeeded the second time. And, um, but, th but then again, I had this big fear of um, somehow it came down to, to you know, being valuable or not, or having a right to exist and be here uh, or not. It was also very interesting how, how the, the potential and opportunity to, to do anything ended up somehow in not being, to, not being able to launch into anything because just too many opportunities. So unable to decide, unable to take a path, unable to start. And, and, and again, I made this experience that uh, the same way as I could not close my company, I could not start something new because I had this great fear of starting because, you know, what would others say and also if it would be a success or not. So what happened to me, it was very interesting that eventually I did not start a business. I, I started a website where people help each other. Uh, it's about favors. You can come and register and share anything you would like to give or, or share anything that you would ask, like to ask for. Basically, it's a very simple thing that, that uh, grew quickly at the beginning because people liked it. But, but it came out of my deepest frustration. It's just very interesting that it, it's not because I was so wise, it's because I was so frustrated and I really needed to do something. And Eventually, I did not overcome my fear. It was just I was so depressed that one night I just this idea came. I did not think at all. I did not resist the idea because I was so frustrated. I didn't really have any other option. Just, just follow this hinge. So I, I registered a domain and I put together something very basic at Pivot <laughs> for for this project and and I, I launched into it and that started to, to to grow. But it was not a rational thing. It just basically it happened to me at the depth of my frustration. And that's, again, is something very interesting that I experienced regarding the nature of fear. And then after this, I also made the experience that, uh, that I do have a choice. Uh, I made the experience that, that I can actually practice, that there are lots of everyday fears in my life. I'm afraid like constantly, all the time, to stand up here and speak. That's obviously a fear to talk to somebody in the break, a, a total stranger that I find myself attracted to, that's a fear, to, to go there and, hey, this is who I am, or to talk, to talk to a woman in a bar or anything that you like, it's just an everyday fear. And I found myself amongst all these fears, and I and also found that 
at some point that that's something I can practice. I don't really have to wait until I'm so depressed that I act. I can actually practice. It's something I can do about my fear. So I, I started to do this exercise when, when I consciously realized that I am afraid of something, then just take, taking this deep breath and actually stepping into that and doing what I was afraid of. And I, I made lots of great experiences this way that I actually forced myself into, into the experience that I was afraid of. It's like pretty much like street begging to some extent. It's, it's very similar. That, but, but then this experience taught me very interesting things. Basically, two things that I learned out of this. One is that oftentimes in my life, fear actually shows me the best direction. It's not the worst, it's the best. I made the experience several occasions in my life that what I am most afraid of, that's where the most valuable experience is. And the most valuable opportunity is if I have the courage to actually, like, like Robert said, to actually embrace my fear and go into that direction. So I, I made the experience, and I'm actually consciously doing it lately, that if I'm afraid of something, I have to do it. because. That's for a reason, and it's a signal not to run away. It's a signal to step outside of my comfort zone and make that experience, uh, whatever that is that I'm afraid of. That's, that's like a big, a big experience that I made. And another big experience is that, that if I fail, because if I make, you know, there is this fear and I make this conscious choice, there are still two options. What, one is that I succeed, and the other one is that I fail. And if I succeed, that's a success, that's a reassurement. I have this nice chat with that woman in the bar, whatever, because she, she did not reject me. But then if it's a failure, there's always a teaching that I can learn from that failure regarding why I wanted it and, or why it happened or what feedback I can learn about myself from that other person and from that situation that's happening to me. So eventually, if, and if I do the learning out of the failure, then the failure actually, if I look at it, it really is a success as well. So either way I go, if I, if I have the courage to make that experience, I can have straight success or I can have a failure that's teaching me something, so it's also a success. Another thing I learned. So that failure really is my greatest direction, or no, fear is my greatest direction, and that failure, that's my greatest learning. So like I really, and I, I'm actually doing it. And this is how my life, it's like completely changed because I started this project about favors and then I, I got some attention. I was invited to a TED talk because of this project. There I said this line that I wanted, I, I said the line was that I wanted, that I wanted success because I wanted money because I wanted women. That was the exact line. And then it was just, it was something that touched people so much that people started to stream towards me. And that's, again, something that I experienced that if I'm, if I'm just honest, if I just open myself up, that's something that draws other people. It opens other people. Because previously I had this company I wanted to sell. So I was like banging on doors of major companies to, to buy stuff from me. And lately I made this experience that if I just, if I just open up, it has it has an effect of opening other people as well. And it's just automatically happening. It's not something consciously happening. It's just deep down. If I, if I show the human that I am, the other person would connect. But then again, an experience I made that I have to be, it's, you know, you can be honest, like I'm, I'm honest, or you can be like honest, honest. And I, I made the experience that being like 70% honest is, is not easy. And being 80% honest is like, that's very difficult. And 90% is like excruciating. And you know, I almost die. It's so difficult to be 90% honest. But then again, 100% is just so playfully easy. And, 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 if, and if I dare to be like 100% honest, that just, that just gives me, it's so interesting, it gives me so much, so much calmness and also so much power which is like which is like flowing through and it's like an immense experience to be a hundred percent honest it's a it's the best experience that i have made in my life and i'm somehow addicted to being honest because it's a good thing for me so it's totally selfish because that's the best best experience that i have made so <coughs> So it's, it's great to open up in any situation that, 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 I, that I face. And this is a great way of facing my, my fear. So actually what I made, uh, it's an equation that I, that, I, that I learned from my experience that if I, if I add up uh, fear and failure, like the fear and the experience of failure, that leads me somehow to freedom. 
it could be a Buddhist teaching, uh, maybe it is, I don't know, but that's just an experience that I have, that, that I'm, I have a, a growing freedom, and I, I'm not totally free, I'm a human, I'm here, I have fears, and I have daily failures, uh, yeah, you know, day after day, but still, I'm getting freer and freer and stronger and stronger in who I am, this way, experiencing my fears and stepping, and, and actually allowing my failures. Um, often I made the experience that there are circles happening uh, in my life, like repetition. We talked about this yesterday, things repeating themselves over and over and again. M maybe different people, but the same situation is happening to me again, and why? It should not be happening. And then I realized that, that if I look into these circles, I can always find something that I am hiding, that I am hiding from myself and from the rest of the world. So it's actually all these circles are results of my fears something that I don't dare to show. And if I, just, if I just make one step more and I do one step more honesty, that would break the circle. Because then I make a new experience. Then it's a new situation. It's not the same repetition. If I'm, if I'm one more step honest with myself, thus it's one more honest what I show towards the world, the world would connect to that, to that next level of honesty. And then it's a whole new circle. It's like it's like as if I was playing a video game, it's often my experience that I'm actually playing a game here and the circles would be, would be the, you know, like the, the levels of the game and I repeat the level because I die in the level and then I'm back at the beginning over and over again until I go all the way in that level of the game and then I, I elevate to the next level and then it's a different round of people and a different situations and again different fears because it's just the next level but then again I can keep playing this game and there's level after level after level so it's just a great thing that I play lately <laughs> and, uh, and it's, it's, it's good it's, uh, you know, it's, it's working for me so and then w one more thing is that uh, um, I have also made, a, made a, an observation because after this talk people started to come to me so uh, lately I make some of my living out of uh, having uh, sessions with people so we would sit down and, and we share, we just talk honestly. Um, it seems uh, many people are lacking uh, other persons they could trust. You know, many people, ma many structures have failed uh, contemporary humanity, so you don't really go to the priest anymore. They're, they're not, not many, and, or you don't think you're stupid, so you don't go to psychologists, but if you're attracted to a person you want to talk and you trust, you can go to, to, to him. So I, I find myself in lots of conversations and I, I identify this pattern that seems to be happening to most people that I meet. And, and, one is, and this pattern is a story of uh, failure and fear. And what, <coughs> I, what I often see is that most people have these projects in their life or their careers, things that they want. Like I wanted my company, I wanted my success, I wanted the money and the women, but I, the point is that I want it. No, seriously, it's, yeah, but still, it's funny, but still, you know, I want it. And then eventually, to all the people that I meet, this wanting results in a crash. And that's like a major breakdown. I crashed my company. I see other people crashing their health. I see people with cancer. The same. I see people with accidents. It's again the same. I, I, I see that people have big crashes in their life regarding their, the physical level of their existence, let it be your health or your, or your financial situation, it's a major crash. And when you have this major crash, then you open up inwards, some, somehow you, you, you let go some of that one thing outside and you start to explore inside. Often you find spirituality or religion and some other supports in your life after this major crash and you start to go to coach or therapist or you know something changes and but that's a second phase and I, actually I um, it's like the crash value you could people have the cash value but they, they could also have the crash value how many crashes did you have no seriously because we should coin this term you know the crash value because it's just so it's just so important anyway so I, I made the observation that we, in the early parts many of us we are like caterpillars and we just want to eat and we just think about ourse ourselves and then after the crash we become a cocoon and then we turn inward and we reflect and we become very sensitive and very soft to some extent and we discover our feminine side if we are if we are men many women would go out and fight their fight because they think they have to show it and now they fight but that's that's just that's just uh, that's just 
and that's always after the crash and that's always but but that's only the middle phase because then I see that another thing happening is what I see thereafter is that people would reach a state where I'm in the cocoon but I'm getting more and more frustrated what am I doing here I should be doing something and then this is the time where I realize that there is something on my back so like in the cocoon we found we find talents that's the experience that I made that we, we were we were wanting but not, not necessarily based on our talents and in the cocoon we discover talents but then there is the great fear and that's the next great challenge after the crash there is a next big challenge becoming this butterfly there is this enormous fear of going out and stopping up with with what i have what i can give and then we have to just launch into what we can give like jose is organizing this conference and that's just a great thing he can give or or they are doing this great beer because they failed to raise money they failed their wanting so they explore their talent and they are brewing this great beer everybody wants, you know, and they can't make enough. And these are just so great stories and they're just so human. That's what I see that, that we all share this. And it's just, a, it, it, it's a pattern in human path that I experience that it's first one thing and then the crash and then experiencing myself and my talents and then the coming out, which is the great fear to step up with who I am. But that's the greatest experience we can make. So I'm, I'm happy to share all this with you. And uh, the big question mark for all of you is that if, if there's anything that I should let go and, and let this crash happen and not to avoid it, firstly, if you're in that phase, and then if you're in, in the reflecting phase, what is my talent? What is, what is it that I'm enthusiastic about and I want to give to others, to the world? <laughs>